Hi, Bob. Welcome to the Happy Healthy Caregiver podcast. Hi, good morning. Nice to see. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. I'm excited to chat with you today. Uh, we always kick off our episode with a little bit of inspiration and words of wisdom from uh, the Happy Healthy Caregiver jar. It's something that I created for my sister when she assumed primary caregiving responsibilities from my mom. So let's see what we got here today, Bob. Okay. It says, if we don't take time for stillness, we will have to make time for illness. And I got that from a fellow family caregiving friend of mine, uh, Peter Rosenberger, who's got a, a company called Hope for Caregiver. But yeah, if you don't if you don't take the time for stillness, you'll have to make time for illness. Um, yes. Who wants that? Yeah, is that another way of saying let's stop and smell the roses? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that it's it's um, your future self will thank you by putting little little deposits into your day. So. Mm -hmm. Um, well, we've got a lot of different topics I want to talk to you about. I know that um, you are have been in the health industry for a while. I know that you're a long di distance caregiver support for your mom. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I uh, live in Pittsburgh and uh, my mom lives in Toledo. And uh, so I used to live in Orlando. So it was a little more long distance back when I lived in Orlando. But since I'm in uh, Pittsburgh now, I see her a little more often than I used to because it's a four hour drive instead of a 20 hour drive. Mm. But uh, she's 84, lives alone, doing really well, uh, still cutting the grass, uh, loves her little dog, takes care of the little dog. And I'm fortunate that I have two brothers who uh, live in Toledo and they stop by and see her, make sure she goes to the doctor. So I'm more of a sounding board, what's going on type of, I'm the eldest of four. Uh, I call her every week, uh, typically on a Sunday. Uh, and then my sister is a nurse in Tampa. So if we have to rely on a direct caregiver, we can tap into my sister in Tampa. But uh, like you said, I've been in healthcare now for over 30 years, been a long time. Yes. I'm. Well, I think that it's great that you all coordinate the care among your siblings um, to help support your mom. And um, how did you get into the healthcare space? Uh, well, it was back in the 80s. Uh, I'm celebrating uh, number 60 this, uh, this year myself. So I was back in the 80s, I worked for an accounting firm, a uh, large accounting firm, and uh, they were looking for people to specialize in healthcare. I'm a CPA by trade. And uh, I said, well, that might be something I like. So uh, I raised my hand and I volunteered for some work in the healthcare industry uh, back then and uh, never left it. Right. So I've had uh, various uh, things during my life, started up a few companies on my own. Uh, I had one that I loved uh, it was probably before it's time, but it was uh, called Nurse MD at Home. Hmm. And uh, we did physician house calls for the elderly. And uh, it was a little startup company. And uh, so I had to do everything right. When you start up a company, you got to do everything. Uh, so I ended up talking to the seniors quite a bit. Right. I'd say, Mrs. Smith, how are we doing? How's the nurse practitioner doing? Are you getting what you need? And I'll never forget the time one of them said to me, uh, Caroline touched me. And I went, what? You know, I'm thinking, what do you mean she touched you? Right. What's going on? But then she said, oh, no, my physician stopped touching me a long time ago when I go to the doctor's office and, you know, they just refill my prescriptions. Right. And I, Caroline, she did a physical and she was really happy about the fact that somebody actually took the time with her. Uh, instead of just kind of going in and out of the office because we know how busy physicians are these days. Uh, yeah. So that, uh, I learned a lot about seniors and elders in, in, during that uh, time of my life. I think it's, a, a, it's such a, um, a lost thing, right? I mean, they're, they're so isolated and even now so more during this pandemic. And especially if your love language is touch, um, it's really, really difficult for people. I, um, I had the pleasure of checking out your, so you're the um, chief operating officer for Grain RX, is that correct? Yes. And um, I got this great little packet of stuff and I thought maybe you'd walk me through it. I know um, for those of you listening, we're on Zoom. So uh, it's very cool. It came, so I got little boxes. Um, this one says, whoops, this one says every day. And then there's another one that says as needed, like a little, a little orange one. 
And I know that you didn't send me real pills. You sent me little candy pellets. No, they're Skittles in case you need a little snack down the road. Oh, well, nice. I do need some snacks. Um, and then on the box, it, you know, it gives information about take as needed, John Smith, Tylenol for pain and fever. Um, and then I thought this was very cool. This like, um, what do you call this? Your we call that a medication calendar. Okay. Medication calendar. It lists out all the medications, all the, even pictures of the pills, because I know like for us, we've dropped pills of my mom's before when we didn't have them in these cute little individual packed, um, you probably have a better name for this. What do you call this? Yeah, we call them simple packs. Simple packs. Make it simple, right? Because it just says morning, noon, night. It, it's all in the pack. So if you had more than one prescription, it would all be in the little pack. Yes. That's so cool. And then, um, yeah, morning, noon, evening, and night. And it tells you on this uh, when your pills get taken. And then as a caregiver, I'm assuming they just take the pack. Um, packets off to give to their care recipient, or if the care recipient is responsible with medication management, they can do it themselves. Sure, sure. Um, and I'd be glad to go through it with, with you um, yeah. a little more. But uh, at Grain Pharmacy, uh, we service about uh, 13,000 seniors. Mm. Uh, 3,000 of them, of them live in assisted living and nursing homes. The other 10,000 live at home. Right. So uh, we took what we do very well in a nursing home setting because uh, there's a lot of uh, medication topics, adherence topics, things like that. But when you're in an, an assisted living facility or a nursing home, you have a nurse who administers your meds. Right. So we said um, it, and we developed this primarily through a program called PACE, a uh, program for all inclusive care for the elderly. Uh, it's a wonderful program. I'd be lo love to tell you more about it. Yeah, yeah, I'm interested. Yeah, so it's a program. It's in about 30 states. Uh, I wish they had a program in Toledo, Ohio, and I, I'd have my mom into it when she can no longer uh, take care of herself like she is now. But um, when we developed the product, and it's been through several uh, iterations, we basically said, how do we service an old, uh, when, if I say old person, it's loving, right? Older so. Adult. She, older adult, a senior. So when I, sometimes I say an old person, but I, I, it's lovingly. So <laughs> I'll put that out there. Um, how do we take care of somebody that's 85 years old, lots of ADL issues, cognitively impaired, maybe uh, literacy topics, maybe the only fifth grade reading level, those types of things. And I always tease, you know, with fingers like this, right? Mm -hmm. They're contractures and they can't open things. So uh, so if you took someone like my mom, maybe 10 years from now, uh, she currently gets her vials from a CVS mail order. And I say, mom, how's the meds going? She might take this one. I take that one. I said, okay, what's that one for up in the cupboard? And she's got her day minder and she's putting pills in a day minder. And uh, over time that gets more difficult. And the more I ask her about it, the more confused she gets about it. And she gets frustrated and, and all that. So we said, look, how do we simplify that? So when you have the everyday box and that's the key, keeping it simple. And, it, and keeping it simple, not only for the, um, the senior, the elder, but their caregiver, right? I, I can't imagine, well, I can't imagine filling out, a, filling in a pill minder with all the pills and, and old, older people get a lot of medications. We have people on 15 to 20 meds. That was my mom. But, yeah, yeah. And we work with the physicians to get that down, right? Hey, the person's 95. Do they still need that medication? You know, because you start getting into getting into quality of life topics, right? Mm -hmm. Versus keeping your cholesterol down um, on it. So, uh, so caregivers, they're, they're doing the day mind they're afraid they're gonna make a mistake, put two pills into one, put Friday into Saturday. It's nerve wracking on it. So what we do is try to make it simple for the caregiver, simple for the resident or the, or the uh, senior, and also work with your physician, right? Because that's the other thing that makes it complicated is new orders, discontinued orders, go see the cardiologist, go see the pulmonologist. There's so many people working the care. We try to bring that all in together into one. And we're able to do that with a PACE program because uh, the PACE program is like an insurance plan and they do all the care planning. They have an interdisciplinary mm -hmm. care team. Uh, the physicians only get assigned a couple of hundred patients instead of 2000 patients. Right. So they're very active in all parts of uh, the person's uh, health care. Uh, so we tap into that. Right. We're a part of the team. 
uh, on it. So that's why currently we go directly working with these types of programs versus doing what we call a um, B to C model where we're going directly to consumer. Okay. Right. So if somebody were to call us and say, Hey, I saw this. Can you send me uh, the boxes in your program? We would say, well, no, you first need to enroll in a PACE program or you need to be part of uh, another entity that we're working with. And if we're not, we'd be glad to call that entity up, you know, and work with them if, if we could. But uh, it's, it's really too complicated right now for us to work directly with somebody who lives on their own, right? If you have to have some minimum requirements, you have to answer the phone. <laughs> some people, older people don't answer the phone, yeah. right? Hey, we're going to ship your medications. Uh, so you got to answer your door, right? So we have what we call a white club program. And we train our drivers about 85 year old people with cognitive uh, challenges and don't like change, right? We, we recently brought on a new PACE program and the, uh, the previous pharmacy had pharmacy delivery trucks. Well, we don't, right? We want to be a little bit unseen, right? With medications, we, you know, we don't want to advertise that we're showing up with your drugs. Probably best. So, so some of them didn't answer the door because they didn't see the old car. They didn't see the old signage, mm. right? So we had to work through that, but uh, so we make it simple. The everyday box, that's the thing you take every day. Mrs. Smith, you take those every day. The and it's as all like box, in one long strip for those of you who yeah. don't see it. Yeah, and we do it breakfast, lunch, dinner, bedtime. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, bedtime. And it's breakfast, like, did you lunch, take dinner, it? You dinner. look at it and, oh, I, yeah. I hadn't taken it yet. What? Yeah. We, have, and we have icons on there. So if you looked at it for breakfast, you're going to see a rooster. Oh, very cool. Sometimes right? people, yeah. So that's the literacy topic. Noon that's the cognitive sun. topic. Yeah, noon's a sun, and I think Evening's we have a, a setting sunset. Sun. Night yes. is a moon and a star. I love it. Yeah. So a doctor might say, uh, "Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Roland, uh, I want you to take these meds." And I say, "Mom, you, when do you take your meds? Well, I take this one two hours before breakfast, and I take this one three hours after breakfast, and I take this." That is so confusing, right? So, so when we work with these pace programs. We try to get them all in for breakfast, right? And you remember, I get up, eat my breakfast, I take my meds, and then I forget about it, right? We try not to do lunch meds, right? If we do lunch meds, now you got to remember to take them with you, right? So if we have to do two, two meds, we'll do breakfast and bedtime or breakfast and dinner because you're at home, right? Uh, yes. The literacy yes. piece, everything you see in the package is uh, at the fifth grade okay. reading level. Right. Oh, I didn't when you go to that. a Rite yes. Aid or a CVS, Meducation, the calendar, the medication can and the leaflets. Yeah, it's called Meducation. It's a product we've developed ourselves working with another company. And when you go to a typical pharmacy and, you know, when they staple all those things on your bag, yeah, the first thing you do away. is you rip them all off and throw them away. Yeah, they're small little print, 10th grade reading level. No. Our leaflets are large print, fifth grade reading level. And guess what? We tell you the things you need to know about the meds, right? We don't say this may cause bladder cancer. Whoa, yeah. my mom called me one day and said, hey, I'm taking something. And my neighbor <laughs> said it causes cancer. And I said, mom, it doesn't cause cancer, right? So they hear things and they learn things. And, and those are all reasons not to take your medications, right? If the med medication is going to cause some type of side effect, your physician will tell you, right? I mean, we work with the physician to get a message out. When you look at the label on the blue box, there's a column there that says depression or whatever that reason is for the meds. Um, and I'm sorry, I didn't get my care package. I'm waiting for it from FedEx. But uh, <laughs> we, the doctor tells us, and, and I'm, this is tongue in cheek. If you say this is the happy pill, we'll put happy pill, mm. right? So we don't just put what, the medication label says it's what the person relates to my Why heart am I pill this? my yeah my heart pill my um whatever so but the physician has to tell us that right as pharmacists we can't make that up right because uh, physicians will prescribe drugs that are what's called off label so whatever the physician tells us and we'll do uh, most of that in about 30 different languages right so if wow. the elder uh maybe never really learned english right? Their native language is Russian. We'll send it in Russian. And if there's a caregiver there, we'll send that one in English because maybe they didn't pick up Russian, right? So they can have a conversation with their, um, their loved one about why they're taking the medications. It's so good the last thing I'll say is that calendar. 
How many times do you, how many times do you go to the doctor's office and they say, what are you taking? What meds are you on, ma'am? This is what I have. Well, if you take your calendar, you can show it to the physician, right? If you're going to go visit somebody and uh, you want to try to remember what the meds look like, you take your pouch as you rip off a week, you take that with you, you take your calendar and um, you can make notes on it, right? Uh, so that, that, that's proved to be very valuable because one of the things that, the, that healthcare professionals have problems with is what's called medication reconciliation, right? You go to the hospital, you go to a doctor, you go to the nursing home, and they're always changing your meds. You go see the specialist and you just, you know, the professionals say, well, what are you on, right? Uh, so that says, hey, here's the most active list. And the okay. nice thing about Grand RX and working with a program is that we only get the orders from one source, right? Mm. So in a retail setting, those retail pharmacists, you could go to specialists and it's really hard to keep track of which ones you're on, you're not on, which one's changed. And that can lead to a med error, right? And we all know uh, what med errors cost us as a society, billions mm -hmm. of dollars for med errors, the types of impacts it has on quality of life, you know, the side effects, yeah. those types of things. So it's Are a really important- Are you managing also the conflict in the meds between, between one med and another and how they could interact? No, absolutely. So any medication order that comes into a pharmacy and in our pharmacy, uh, we have um, uh, PharmDs who specialized in elder care, but you're looking for drug to drug interactions. You're looking for allergy interactions. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, you know, so, um, you know, so it's our job to work with the team to give the patient a chance for success with the medications and understanding. And then that goes over to the caregiver. Mm -hmm. Right. They can use the same things to help their mom or dad or aunt or uncle. Well, and then they'll know, you know, if they're if they're not a live in caregiver, or they're down the street, they can go and they can see, you know, everything's dated and, and whether or not they've complied with their medication or or um, I know in my my husband's mom situation, she would over medicate. Um, and so, you know, he would have to use a lockbox and just keep out what she needed for certain days. She didn't live with us. Um, and that system worked. So let me, let me understand, like if I, so I can't call you directly and get it, but I know I need to go through this PACE program, which is an available in many, many states. How do I find, how do, as a caregiver, and I want to get my mom on this because frankly, well, my mom's passed, but when she was alive, my sister, bless her heart, had a Tupperware of medications that she would fill for my mom for a month at a time, um, you know, in little in pill dispensers. But let's say we wanted to do that. She was in Michigan. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's a state that's- um, Oh, Michigan has a lot of PACE programs. You're fortunate, Michigan. You would have been okay. fortunate in Michigan. So in Michigan, I live in Georgia, but mom was in Michigan. So how do I find a PACE program? Yes, um, the, uh, the best way would be to um, get online in the National PACE Association. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I just happen to have their uh, e their website uh, here. So it is um, www.npa, Nancy Paul Allen, online.org. Okay, I will put a link into the show notes page as well, too, because that's really step one, right? You've got to just see. Yes. And then you say, I heard this podcast. I know this is, exists. Um, that's That's wonderful. And how are you... Um, how, how has COVID impacted this year industry and, and what are you doing to mitigate sure. transmitting um, the virus through yes. medication? Yes, yes, yeah. COVID's consumed us all this year, right? Yes. Uh, on many fronts, uh, personally and professionally. Uh, and it affected uh, our delivery, our white club program. Uh, so into our nursing homes, to our delivery into our nursing homes. But uh, so, for example, in our nursing homes, we used to take the, the medications right to the nurse's station. Right now, we deliver them to the lobby. Okay. Right. We used to deliver them in plastic totes, right? And we get them back and we clean them up and get them back. Now we do disposable boxes, right? We don't want the boxes back or the totes back. Uh, in regards to our white club program uh, for seniors that live at home, um, it's funny. I'm going to say it's a lot like getting a pizza. You know, we used to knock on the door and exchange the meds, sign here. How you doing, Mrs. Smith? Well, now it's maybe call ahead. Hey, I'm going to be there. Uh, it's ring the doorbell, step back, right? Put the meds on the porch like a, like a meal delivery almost. 
uh, and uh, we don't require signatures. Usually we'll want a signature to, for proof of delivery, mm. but uh, you know, we just avoiding the contact. Now, once you have our systems uh, in the pouch itself, the simple pack, you know, you open the meds, we suggest you open them over a bowl, right? Because sometimes people, you know, the elderly, their hands and their uh, dexterity is tough. And if you rip it too hard, the pills will go everywhere. Yeah, and my right? dog's so, always right there, right? Oh, isn't that heart? I mean, please yeah. don't swallow that heart pill. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but you throw the pouch away, right? When you have vials of medications or sometimes other types of packaging, like we call punch cards, we can punch them out. Well, you've got multiple times you're, you're touching that or a caregiver comes in and touches it or, you know, so it's more of a disposable system. Uh, you get uh, a new box every month and new um, orders every month. And, you know, I'm, yep, we, ship, we ship that out every 28 days. Yeah, every 28 days, you get a new blue box. So on day 29, you should, you'll have your new box a few days ahead of time and you should be finished. I mean, if there's still pills in that box at the end of the month, you're not adherent, right? You missed a day, right? Or something. So uh, that's another indicator on adherence for a caregiver. You come in and if it's 15 days into the cycle, there should be 15 days left, right? You don't have to like dump all the pills out, count them out, see how many pills are still left, right? All the tricks of the trade that uh, we know uh, caregivers have to go through. Uh, we have some people, they'll, they'll put a big black marker A on a bottle just to say that's AM on it. So uh, so there's just less touches with the packaging. More, we're more careful with delivery. Um, we deal, you know, people aren't answering the phone as much as they used to. Uh, so we got to have, you know, little tricks maybe, you know, to uh, get them to answer the phone. Uh, uh, and I think too, you know, like all of us, I think the seniors are, are getting tired of this. I mean, probably more so than anybody else because they're isolated yeah. on it. So uh, I've talked to some PACE programs some physicians and, they're doing a really good job with taking the care from the center out into the home, right? These PACE programs, um, they buy buses and transportation vehicles to bring you into a daycare center as much as you need to for activities and socialization and seeing your physician. And they can't do that as much, right? They can't bring as many people in as they used to because of social distancing. And people have just said that they're doing telemedicine, right? Uh, those types of things. And people are just it's almost like your kids. I remember coming home and I'd say, Jennifer, how you doing? Or how'd you doing today in school? And she said, good. Did you learn anything? Yes. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. No. Fine. Right? I'm fine. Fine. Yeah. Right. Where the seniors are getting like that. How you doing? Fine. You know, but before they were a little more bubbly, right. But they're, it's tough, right. To, to, for them uh, to have to deal with telemedicine. I mean, thank God we have it. Right. Or you wouldn't be getting any care at all, but right. uh yeah, so I think to answer your question, the, the things I talked about, plus just this kind of, I don't want to call it a cloud, you know, it's kind of just always there in terms of hoping that, uh, you know, somebody doesn't get it. Uh, you know, obviously the seniors are, are passing, dying more than most with the disease. They're the most vulnerable, right? So, uh, you know, we're not a front line. We're not there in the person's home. We're not there in the, in the PACE program, but we're on the phone. We're delivering. We're listening to the caregivers that, you know, are going through this. Uh, we try to empathize with them. You know, we're telling our staff to spend a few more minutes on the phone if, the, if a senior calls or a caregiver calls, uh, just really trying to support their efforts. I, I'm sure that's uh, well appreciated. I, I have to ask, because I'm sure people are thinking like, okay, I love this service. I want to see if I have a PACE program. What can they expect to, you know, if they're paying X, you know, for their prescriptions now for this white glove leveled up service, is it, you know, X percentage higher? Um, yes. What can they expect? Well, yeah. So a PACE program, uh, if you qualify for a PACE program, there are qualifications. Um, so one of the qualifications is you have to be nurse, what they call nursing home eligible, right? So that just means you have a lot of ADL issues. Yep. And Activities needs. of daily living in case people yes. that is. Yep. Yes, thank you. And, uh, and each state has their own requirements on what they think means if you qualify for a nursing home. And uh, I guess you could call a PACE program uh, a nursing home alternative program, right? So if you, if you qualify um, um, in terms of your conditions, whether they be mental or physical, uh, you have a choice. Well, Mrs. Smith, you can go to the nursing home, you still have that benefit, or you can go into the PACE program. Most people pick the PACE program these days. Right? Uh, who wouldn't? 
uh, on it. And then the other thing is um, you have to be what's called dual eligible, right? So a lot of you might have heard about dual eligibles, dual eligibles. I mean, that's what's costing this country a lot of money. That just means that you're on Medicaid and you're on Medicare, right? And typically when someone's on Medicaid, um, they're uh, poorer, they have less resources, right? And yeah. a lot of seniors I think, get themselves to that situation because it's so costly sometimes to take care of people at home. Uh, so if you're Medicare, Medicaid, and you live in an area where there's a PACE program and you're nursing home eligible, uh, guess what? There's no cost, no co-pays. No they cover everything that Medicare and Medicaid covers. So it's a great deal. Uh, now, if you don't qualify, uh, it's going to go PACE program, the PACE program as to whether they take what they call private pay or people that have other types of insurance. But it's primarily a Medicaid only Medicare dual eligible program out okay. there. And you raise an interesting point. I mean, I would love to do this for more people. But on the Part D side, most seniors have Part D drug insurance. I just want to get into the numbers too much, but they really pay for you to go to the pharmacy, get the drugs in a vial for you to do the day minders, right? They don't say it that way, but what a retail pharmacy gets paid to, to, to put a label on a vial and put it in a bag and hand it to you. Uh, you can see how much more work there is. A lot more to work on the caregiver. And the... Yeah. So I can't, I can't make it work financially on what a Part D plan would pay me for the drugs, right? And we just haven't gone out and said, gee, you know, we'll, we'll bill you Part D, but in order for you to get the calendar and get the box and have 24 hour access, all those things we do for our PACE programs, um, we'd have to charge you $50 a month. We'd have to charge you $100 a month. Mm -hmm. We'd have to charge you for the shipping, right? We can do that. We just haven't you know, gone out and uh, look for markets where people can afford to do that. I know I, I have the ability, thank goodness, if I get the program and pay $100 a month for my mom to have the meds, right? So it's not impossible, uh, but we've just chosen to work with other programs at this time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you have, if your audience has issues finding a PACE program, you can always call into Grand Rx or we, we would de definitely help you find a PACE program and and uh, if there was a way for us to help you some other way, we would do it. Yeah, that's 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 fabulous. That's all we can ask. Um, all right, we're going to switch gears a little bit, Bob. Um, you know, we talk about self care on the show, so I want to know what you're doing to um, to to help alleviate this cloud of COVID over you. What are some of the things you've gotten creative on to to to, to for your own personal self care? Yeah. Yes, yes. And that's uh, with all the craziness out there, it's been harder and harder, right? You know, so I, I stopped watching the news. You know, Me too. Just, that, well, that's self care, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, well, I should say I stopped. I used to be a news junkie. I watch it less. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm a little more uh, choosy on what I do watch uh, on it. So I guess that's one thing. Uh, I came down to Florida uh, where my grandkids, I have two grandsons. Uh, One's six months old and one's three years old. And they live here in Orlando. And I came down for Thanksgiving. We ended up not doing Thanksgiving dinner for social distancing. But uh, as many of you may know, in Pittsburgh and other parts of the country, they're closing up dining and they're closing the gyms. And so I just decided to work from home here in Orlando. Uh, so I'm able to go to the gym two or three times a week, kind of get out there. Uh, and uh, spend time with my kids. I have three kids. They're all here in Orlando, so I can see them. And uh, my son's got a business here, so I help him a little bit uh, on the nice. side with the business. Uh, and then sports. I'm glad sports is out there. You know, I watched the Browns game last night. That was an exciting game. So I don't know. I guess that's it. Um, I think that's audio great. Books, audio books. I listen to a lot of audio books. I'm the same. I always have a paper and an audio book going. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, there are some silver linings in, in 2020 and uh, having more time with your family sounds like a good, sounds like a good one, a big one. Yes. So that's yeah, wonderful. And watch, yeah. And, you know, uh, just the idea of uh, learning how to do things remotely, I think it's going to change us for the good in the long run. I think there's a lot of positive things happening that are under, you know, that aren't being seen aren't as transparent because of everything that's going on. So mm -hmm. I think we do have an opportunity to um, 
uh, get to a place that's better. I, I think so too. It's been a big resilience. The theme of the year is resilience for sure. I think I yes. covered that in my one of my earlier podcasts. Well, I um, at toward the end of the show we do a lightning round. Um, okay. So I wrote a, a a book. It's called the Just for You, a daily self care journal, and it basically it was written with caregivers in mind, but it has a prompt on every page that just helps caregivers be more mindful and people in general about how to be more intentional with their self-care. So I have some questions about you um, or that you you can share. Um, Share about a time or a place where you feel at peace. Is there like when you close your mind and you're like, you know, you visualize your happy place. Do you have one of those? Um, I would say I have a happy place. Um, I guess, uh, um, when I feel, you know, maybe most at peace, if that's the right word, is more along the lines of, uh, maybe accomplishing something. Um, I don't know. I, um, I, I do get out when I do go to the gym, I do get on there for an hour and a half, just kind of walking and running when I can. And, I find myself daydreaming about things. I don't know if I can sit here and say what it's about because I guess it's like a dream. You get up in the morning, you can't remember it, right? But I find myself maybe bouncing back, thinking about my mom, you know, and then maybe thinking about a problem at work and and kind of just, uh, you know. It's like your time in the day where you just give yourself a little bit of white space um, and see what happens. I think sometimes we're so tight. I know I'm guilty of this. It's just like jumping from one thing to another and then it's, Yes. Um, so it's good to have, I think, white space in your day. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, talk, I think so. yeah. we talk on the show about like how there can be, um, some health and happiness, frankly, and just trying new things. Um, is there anything that you've tried that's been new lately or something that's on your list that you'd like to try to either do or experience in 2021? Oh, well, I haven't worked out my New Year's resolutions yet uh, for 2021. I'm starting to set up my 2021 files, I guess, on my computer and get organized for 2021. Um, I guess I would say, um, I don't know. I've been uh, I'm just a bit of this fitness thing now since April, right? So um, I lost about 60 pounds. Ooh, right? and, congrats. Um, I would just, it was, it was in April. Yeah, I was just sitting in April and I am watching the news and I'm like, I'm the poster child for COVID. I mean, I, you know, I got to do something about this. Right. And there's a lot of other reasons to do to take care of yourself, you know, like grandkids and family and all that. But uh, I would say that, uh, you know, I want to continue uh, that effort. Uh, um, I, everybody, I think, well, not everybody, lots of people maybe around the uh, yo-yo type things up and down, up and down throughout their lives. But, you know, I'm going to be 60 and I want this to stick. and. Uh, you know, my uh, father-in-law is 94 years old. I'm like, I didn't think about it before. I'm going to be 94, right? I want to be around, right? And I, all of us, I think as parents say, we don't want to be burdens to our kids, right? So staying healthy and having an active lifestyle, I think is important. Uh, I hope one day that I can make Orlando permanent. So I think about how I can get here to be part of my grandkids' lives and my That's, kids' lives. I love that. You know, those types of things. But um, um, I think you've made a, know, all my had life, a big... I've been more of a big habit changing year. Are there, are there just little things that you did that added up to this um, success story that you've had this year with your own health? With the weight? Yeah. You know, it's funny. People ask me and I said, well, I don't know. It's, it boils down to two things, exercise more and eat less. Right. I mean, it's not a gimmick. I mean, it, that's really how it works. And, uh, but it doesn't have to be a lot. Right. I think it's uh, just try to, to stay on it. Uh, I've always been someone that gets streaky get on the bandwagon off the bandwagon with food or whatever my habits are and you're gonna have a bad day you know what you're gonna have the four thousand calorie day just don't have six of them in a row (laughs) (laughs) you know get back in line um and then um you know do something you know you go to the gym and you think you're gonna do an hour there's been days where i've gone to the gym i sit in the parking lot and i go i'm just bushed i go home at least I tried. At least I went to the gym and I sat yeah. in the parking lot or I did 10 minutes. So I just say, stay on it and, and try to make it something that, uh, that uh, you can um, change your lifestyle with. Cause that's really what it boils down to is 
being purposeful about it and uh, writing it down, staying on top of it, measuring it, make it as important as, um, you know, a Netflix series you're watching. You know, yeah, it's it appointments important. for yourself. You're scheduling appointments for yourself. Did you, did you use an app? Did you use a journal, a log or? I did, I did put on it. I did use an app. Uh, I'm not using the app now because it got me into a routine. But What app were you using? They're going to ask, so. They're going to ask me what app. Uh, I'm going to have to look. I got it on my, my phone My Fitness here. Pal. Uh, fit- I used to use that one. It's Life Something, I think. I used to use my fitness app. And that, that's a key too. Uh, when you write down what you're going to eat ahead of time, it helps. You write it down after you've had a meal. Oh, I got to do better next time. So when I was really into the weight loss phase of this thing, uh, I'd put it in and then I'd say, whoa, 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 I got to take a portion out, right? If I'm going to be at 1200 calories or 1500 calories. Yeah. Or, yeah. But it's called Life Sum, L-I-F-E-S-U-M. Okay. And there, is a free, there is a free version so you can get started in the most important part of that for me was uh, the diet log, writing down what you eat, right? So if you write it down and then you still consume it, <laughs> you I need more to help. in Weight Watchers, I did Weight Watchers a few different times. I said, write it before you bite it. There you go. That's- so it's a little a little uh, tip, but um, well, I'm ex- I think that's wonderful that you've taken this crazy year and made and turned it into something positive and um, have you seen any health benefits from your 60 pound loss? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a diabetic and, uh, my insulin, uh, intake is half, right? So medication, I got off a couple of meds. Uh, my A1C is, was last time a 5.5. If anybody knows what an A1C is, the normal is six. Yeah. No, no, it's di- It's your sugar levels. Sugar level. Okay. Yeah. It's your A1C, right? So if you're a diabetic and they say, what well, can you watch the commercials on TV where, for these uh, new drugs for diabetes? They say your A1C is below seven, right? So if you're a diabetic, below seven is pretty good uh, on it. So yeah, that, my physician couldn't believe it. He looked at me and said, what are you doing here? Right. So yeah, my blood pressure went down. That's so, so amazing. And you got, yeah. off to, got off your meds. I made your... You have less sorting and things to do on your own. Yes, less um, injections. Yeah, less injections. My mom was my both my parents diabetic. Diabetes runs in my family, and um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's you are you were your poster child. You were the poster child. Now you're the poster child for yeah. hey, you can be sixty years old and lose six. You did sixty and sixty by sixty, sixty pounds, but um your 60th birthday and you've made some really yeah, big think about it that way yeah yeah i like to turn everything into a thing in fact i was going to tell you that instead of resolutions because resolutions are heavy i like to do a um 21 for 2021 with this year but that doesn't roll off the tongue as well as 20 for 2020 did but so i'm saying more fun in 21 yes. so what are the things what are 21 okay. little things you know, maybe you want to read a book or visit someplace new or try a new hiking trail or try a new restaurant. Um, so I list out 21 things and yeah. I do it as a family activity with my, um, with my kids and my husband. It's something we do on New Year's Eve day together. Yes. Yeah. And I think the other thing significant about 21, don't they say if you do it 21 times to form a new habit? Is that like a rule of thumb with uh, forming a new habit? Yes, you're right. That is a magic number with tw- something about three weeks. It takes like if you do something, you know, drinking water or um, some little yes. small habit. I think that's that it does stick. So well, we've got lots to look forward to in 2021. Is there is there anything else, Bob, that you were wishing we spoke about today? Hey, you know, I'm an accountant by trade, so we write things down. Uh, but I, I really enjoyed uh, chatting with you today. Uh, I really enjoyed learning more about your company. I spent some time on the website and uh, yeah, so I, I learned something there and I'm going to share it with people. I've already shared it with our employees, right? As a way they can go and uh, uh, get some information about caregiving. Um, so uh, no, I think we covered just about everything. I will say one, I don't know if this is a good thing or not, but if people look at good things, maybe this is a happy thing for this year, is that flu season is a lot less severe this year. I don't know if you've noticed that, but uh, we keep an eye on the flu every year because that kills a lot of seniors, yeah. right? Get your flu shot and all that. But uh, I get a map every week of where flu's at and it's mostly green still, right? And I've seen some news articles where because we're social distancing and 
washing our hands more and being more careful uh, that less people are getting the flu. Well, good. That's good. Yeah, keep your germs to yourself for sure. Exactly. And everybody stay safe and, and wash their hands and um, do what you need to do to, um, to take care of your health and happiness. So um, thank you so much, Bob, for, for visiting with um, today. Um, hit, hit, stick around and we'll close up our conversation, but I just wanna say thank you. Sure, okay, thank you.